Hello, my soccer universe. Still not feeling all that great. I'm a teeny bit, but you can hear in my voice. Uh, fever is gone. Everything hurting. Tomorrow I got, have to go to the doctor. And let's figure that one out. Um, and of course, as it's when you're sick, you're sleeping, you're awake, you're sleeping, you're awake. And so I'm awake uh, later than I actually would want to be. But that enables me to make me this video and not have this horrible long upload time that I had earlier this to do today when I talk about yesterday's results. So, not gonna say too too much because I, I mean I watched actually quite some games but not uh, only one really in full length. Uh, but I want to start out with a um, unusual spot for me, Greece, where Pauk wins at home against Olympiakos three one. And that means they were already up 3-0. That means it was first against second, but already in favor with nine points ahead. Park looks pretty good in getting the first championship since the, the mid-80s. And yeah, I know when I heard when I quick story, uh, I think the first Greek team I ever heard about was Park. They played against Innsbruck in the 90s in the UEFA Cup, I want to say, or China. Euro European Cup, whatever. When I got a little bit into soccer, I was looking at the black and white teams, and of course, there's Pauk. And you know, it's not always that I choose black and white teams. As you see, I'm very Milan, it's not a black and white team. But you know, I have a slight preference to it. black and white teams um, just because of Lusk. And so, I'm very happy to see Pauk finally winning uh, the Greek League again. Still, lots of games to be played. Looks very, very good. Okay, let's go straight to the big result today. Um, I'm very Milan because, yeah, Milan won, but the big result today is Manchester City against Chelsea. That was the game that I said, okay, I'm gonna watch that one, then I'm gonna take a short break, and then I'm gonna watch Milan. Ah, after three minutes, Sterling makes it 1 0, and I already uh, told my wife, I have a feeling that game is over. Barely has started, and it's over. And you know, she said, yeah, you know, it's, don't despair. Ten minutes later, Aguero with a wonderful shot makes it 2-0. I said, yeah, it, I think it's really over. Uh, but you know, let me watch a little bit more. 19th, Aguero, I think it was a rebound, makes it 3-0. And I said, yeah, I'm not going to watch that one any, any, anymore. Um... It was complete dominance. Yes, Chelsea had a few things going on here and there, but no, City scored on every shot that they made. City roll over Chelsea. The end result, I saw the 4 0 of Gunduan, which was also a kind of a block shot by Aguero, and he puts it in from outside of the net. 4 0 at halftime, 6 0. Another Aguero penalty, and Raheem Sterling in the 80th make it 6 0. Biggest defeat for Chelsea ever. And given the troubles that seemingly Sari has with his Chelsea team, I know if it was me, I probably would step down. I know this is uh, financially some stuff, or you know, quitting, blah blah blah. Doesn't look good. Uh, I'm not sure if he will get fired. But it doesn't look good for him. And Chelsea looks like a shambles. So I mean. They just thought, we just thought they, with the 5 0, they got back on track and now they got demolished, taken apart in all its pieces by Manchester City. And those are two teams that Manchester City I would favor still, but overall they should be on a roughly even footing. Uh, last two champions, I mean, it's an absolute disaster. And um, Chelsea now sits in sixth spot. They play the League Cup final against City. I don't see anything happening there. Uh, if they continue in, uh, in this way, that's going to be one of the more one-sided League Cup finals. Uh, the other game, Tottenham had a lot of trouble with Leicester. The end result looks a lot more um, one-sided than it actually was. Leicester was well, in, well into the game. Uh, Tottenham took the lead after Leicester already mi uh, missed some chances. And then uh, it's 1-0, um, Leicester still getting chances and getting a penalty. Wardy comes on, he started on the bench, and Yuri saves the pen penalty. And, you know, to punish it, Eriksen has a little bit of space and makes a long shot that goes into goal. 
still Leicester is a pesky team. It played actually quite quite well and um, almost would have made another goal, I think. Yeah. So Barnes, exactly. Barnes missed a big one. And in the end, uh, Vardy pulls one back. And then at the very end, when Les is uh, pressing to get the equalizer, uh, some human runs from the midline alone on goal and makes it 3-1 and gives Tottenham uh, the win. And so Tottenham remains in the mix. I mean, they're only five points points behind Liverpool and City. Liverpool has a game in hand, so it might be eight points, but you know. Tottenham is the clear third place team. United, um, 51 points, one point ahead of Arsenal. I would say those four are the ones that look set to be in the Champions League next year. Arsenal and Chelsea are dropping off. And yeah, a little bit depressing. I was really hope, hope, hoping a Chelsea can get something from City. Uh, nope. But in that form, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be tough to get City, to not pick City at the moment to be champions in England, even with uh, the game in hand for Liverpool, which is the game against United. I have some fantasy. I actually see United winning against Liverpool. I might see United and Sorsha was there today. I might see United even winning against City. Just saying, just saying. And maybe that would put the balance back. Uh, other results, Bremen, Augsburg 4-0, Dusseldorf, Stuttgart, uh, depressing 3-0 as well. Let's go to a little bit happier. So when I switched over from um, the City game, I said, well, what games are there? And I uh, got to Valencia, Real Sociedad, which was maybe not the best choice, but it was, um, you know, it seemed like an even game with Sociedad, maybe having even been more... Um, Going forward, I mean, being more together, but Valencia missing chances almost comically. They should have won this by two or three nil. They didn't. It stays a nil nil. Um, Valencia is such a mixed bag. They uh, give Barcelona a lot of trouble. They fight back to make it two two against Betis, and now they only get a nil nil at, at Real Sociedad. Sevilla Eibar was a big game. Uh, Eibar had a two nil lead midway through the second half, um, and Sevilla fought back in the last few minutes. I actually saw. Uh, some of that um, Sarabia gets the uh, stoppage time uh, equalized and that after Banega got sent off in the 84th with 10 men they scored two goals I'm sorry I look horrible <laughs> it's almost like clay here the hair that's what you get so yeah 2-2 two, two, and it almost would have been 3-2 so um, no one is really ha happy about that but uh Still a big result. Uh, and then uh, Athletic Bilbao Barcelona, I saw the last 10 minutes or so, nil nil. Uh, all I could get, it was an interesting game. There were huge chances for Bilbao and uh, mostly one by Iñaki Williams, where just staying, just uh, stretched his hand out and saved it. Um, there was also quite some controversy with uh, players uh, being sent off after yellow red for nothing really um, almost then it, at, at the end there was a penalty appeal um, yeah from all I could get I haven't seen much uh, Bilbao was the better team got the first point against Barcelona in a while so yeah the big win in La Liga is Real Madrid uh, making point uh, gaining ground in on both the two top teams overtaking Atletico and now only six points behind Barca. Will there be a championship race? We'll see. Sevilla is still dropping off. Getafe sits strong in fifth and Betis is in sixth. But both Sevilla teams look iffy to me. I gotta say, Al Alaves is seven, Valencia eight. Valencia missed a huge chance. I mean, they could have been 34, they could have overtaken Betis. So yeah, Eibar sits in 10th, so not that bad. Bilbao is overtaken by Espanyol. But you know, they played Barcelona and we already talked about the bottom. And then we go, today was a big Serie A uh, match day, of course. Um, but before we go to Serie A, let me just go to uh, the next, next match that, that I watched. And that was uh, actually between Rennes and Saint-Étienne. And I switched over because I actually wanted to see Rennes again. They actually played a nice game against Nantes. And it was again uh, Saint-Étienne who is up there. Uh, so I thought this might be interesting when I uh, put all 
uh, switched over. It was a 1-0 already for uh, Ren. It was a weird game. You could see that Ren is having a lot of um, uh, strength going forward, but the more complete team was saint Etienne. But saint Etienne got completely, and I mean completely distracted by the referee. And for no good reason. Um, there was a yellow card given to the um, striker Hamuma. It was the first yellow card in, in, in the game because he is touching the referee like that. I mean, stupid as can be. Uh, they wanted to have a penalty appeal. They, they just get upset with the calls. And I gotta say, that most of the calls were all right. Uh, at least from my per per perspective. And Ren had good chances. I mean, Ben Arfa hit the upright and and Saint Etienne still continues arguing with the referee and in the end uh, the uh, coach gets sent up to the stands uh, most proud of me I could even lip read some French of his um, and I could do the same thing when Subotic got his yellow card after a tackle where he really goes on the shin yes he did not intend to hit he hit it but um, it, it is a it foul it is even yellow because if you go that in, what can I do? And he, pourquoi, pourquoi, pourquoi? And then his colleague needs to translate for him. So Saint Etienne positively lost the plot by getting upset with the referee, which is never a good thing. And then they get a penalty uh, through VAR. Uh, was pretty, pretty clear. I mean, the handball by the captain up. Perra, Ben Arfa converts. And then a little bit later, uh, Renou. Makes it 3 0 for Ren, which probably was a little bit too high of a result, but I think 2 0 would have been correct. And then Amuma gets sent off because he got this stupid first yellow card and he makes another stupid tackle. 3 0 getting sent off just makes no sense whatsoever. But as I said, Saint Etienne lost their plot. I didn't watch then Juventus uh, against Empoli because that's uh, so long. I knew where this game is going. But uh, let's go Liga uh, to lose Reims 1 1, Montpellier, Monaco 2 2. Another big result for Monaco. Not loses at home to Nîmes 2 4. Hurts a little bit. You know, I like the north northwestern French teams. Uh, Gangor Lille 0 uh, 2, and Nice beats Lyon 1 0. Lyon, after the big win against uh, PSG, drops down. Let's look in the standings. Yep. Lille is now relatively safe in the second spot. Lyon is in third. Uh, PSG 59 with two games in hand. 49 for Lille, 43 for Lyon. Montpellier moves up 37. Marseille is fifth. Saint Etienne, of course, um, has still a game in hand over Marseille with 37 points. 37 points also for Nice. And Rennes has also 36 points. So there is a lot of movement still in the French league going on. And now we go to Serie A. Milan, 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 Milan. I actually didn't watch a thing today, which is unusual for me. The early game was a 1-1 between Bologna and Genoa. I followed a little bit, but just on scores. Atalanta uh, against Spal. Spal had a 1-0 halftime lead. The first time I saw it, it was 1-1, and I was hoping well, maybe Spal can get a point now. Atalanta uh, wins. Yes, Atalanta is the better team. I am solely from a million perspective and they have to play Atalanta next uh, uh, weekend and I really don't like games at the uh, Atletia Zurich dell'Italia that's the interesting name of the uh, stadium in Bergamo I don't like it because the floodlights there are very dark and Atalanta is a pain in the butt they're a really great team they're a pain in the butt to play against really 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 but Ilicic and Zapata make the two goals. So let's see how this will go next week. Torino Udinese 1 0. The worries for Udinese don't get uh, less. Sampdoria, very surprising 1 0 loss at home to Frosinone. Um, last week they lost to Sampdoria. The Cagliarella scoring streak is broken and now Frosinone is beating Sampdoria. Juve, of course, winning 3 0 against Sassuolo. Let's look at the scorers. Kadira, Ronaldo, Emre Can, um, and then Milan Cagliari. I watched the game in full. It was an enjoyable game to watch. Uh, first of all, let's get started right, right, right at the beginning. If there's any game where the pre-game includes Bohemian Rhapsody and We Will Rock You by Queen, and the whole stadium and so on is singing, and then there is a guy or a girl 
standing there with a Brian May signature guitar copy playing a soul of Bohemian Rhapsody and We Will Rock You. You're about mm. to have a great game from me. Really, 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 really. Uh, I couldn't be better. I'm a huge Queen fan. Uh, I think in my teens, there were three or four years where I only listened to Queen. Still, I have hold them in high regard and, you know, cannot be better. And the game was also nice, uh, mainly because Cagliari, and I kind of expected that Cagliari is not a team that sits back and defends. Cagliari is playing with um, with the opponent and actually is also trying to make it more, uh, you know, play reasonably, not very Italian. And that's this is something to be commended. And I really hope this keeps them in Serie A. Uh, uh, we need Southern Italian teams in Serie A. We really do. Uh, Cagliari is the southernmost team at the moment. As this is ridiculous, absolutely ri r ridiculous. But of, of course, today, yeah, when Milan is playing, I want Milan to win, and they did. Uh, although I was a little bit lucky, the first goal uh, crossing by Suso, uh, Cagliari, uh, Cranio, saves it, but hits his captain, Capitelli, and he makes an own goal, scrappy goal. Calorie doesn't give up, but you know there was this was a, uh, the time when Milan really got into the game, and after a nice cross by Calabria, Paqueta slots it home and uh, for, to make it two 0 And there was first a counter, where I thought there was uh, Cialanoglu on the left and Piontek running, and Cialanoglu just lost the ball somehow. I mean, lost sight of everything. I think he really went wild, went to score because he feels the criticism, um, and. Misses the time where he could have played to Piontek, who would have probably taken a shot and go have had, had a great chance. On the other hand, since he kind of got lost in between the legs, the ball finds its way to Calabria, who makes the cross in and Paqueta slots it home. Um, also, gotta say, um, Paqueta is, of course, a Flamengo product. And there was this horrible tragedy where 10 youth players were uh, killed in the uh, um, burning building of the youth center. And Paqueta, of course, was playing with black armband and clearly dedicated his first goal for, for, for Milan to this tragedy. Um, 22nd minute, Milan up to nil. Two minutes later, Piontek with his first uh, shot on goal that he didn't make. Uh, he tried to lob it over the keeper who just got his and on there it was not 3 0 Hatton, it was 2 0. Milan then really controlled the game. And maybe thought that they had the game in the bag. And I think a 2 0 lead at halftime is one of those that <clears throat> is not the, how, how to say, it's not the easiest one because it's very uh, tempting to let yourself go and then the one put a goal back and then you are suddenly into trouble. And that's almost what happened. Uh, suddenly, Joao Pedro finds himself uh, making a shot on uh, the Milan goal. Donnarumma saves. He also had a great save earlier in the sec in, in the first half. Saves, but Joao Pedro gets the ball again and wants to chip it over uh, Don Donnarumma and hits the bar. And that woke up Milan. At that point, it was for a few minutes uh, back and forth again. And one of the uh, attacking moves then gets to Cialanoglu, who again gets... Um, uh, you know, shoots the ball, gets deflected, it lands at Piontek, who slots it home. 3 0, 60 second game done. But Caleri still tried to make a goal and should have had, maybe Capitelli could have made good on his own goal. So there were chances for uh, Caleri's score, but I have to say, overall, there was also a great chance for Suso, should have made it 4 0. There were more chances. Uh, Milan overall had a good performance, maybe a little bit more um, concentration. But again, you're three nil up, and I understand. But if they keep playing that way, I'm looking quite optimistic for Milan. Uh, Paqueta and Piontek were great, great acquisitions. I don't know what it will mean eventually for them in uh, financial fair play. There, I am worried, honestly. But when I look from a team building perspective, mm, this I like. I really like what Milan is doing at the moment. And yeah, we'll see what happens in Bergamo next week. Um, let me just check the Serie A schedule for next week when the game is and who are the others playing. Yeah, Milan plays already on Saturday. Uh, 
Genoa at home to Lazio and Napoli, Torino and Roma Bologna on Monday. So yeah, a win is necessary. Well, again, congrats to Park. Sprinkling a little bit Greek league yesterday, I actually saw that Ajax lost. Uh, I haven't seen the goal, but I heard it's uh, a screamer. Uh, watch it if you can, and I will try to find it myself. Again, let me know what you watched. I'm gonna go to bed now. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.